surprising momentum after those two big victories in Kansas and Maine. The front runner, though, still picking up Louisiana and Kentucky, whereas Marco Rubio was actually able to pick up Puerto Rico. So is this Donald Trump's wake-up call ahead of tomorrow's GOP? Siegfried, Freud O'Connell, and Steve Rogers. Ford, let me start with you. Uh, you know what? A lot of people were really surprised, including myself. Not only that Cruz won these, but he had huge margins, whereas the margins of Trump's victories over him on Saturday were relatively small. Well, I think it, I think this weekend was a big, big W for Ted Cruz and the anti-Trump forces, and I do think it's a little bit of a wake-up call for Donald Trump. That said, though, he's still the best position to win the 1,237 delegates outright. Trump's bar is a little higher. Now he's got to take home 58 percent of the remaining delegates. Uh, here's the thing. Rubio's folks did go to Cruz in Louisiana. The question is, will that continue? Will they actually coalesce behind Ted Cruz? I'm not sure of that just yet, but we are going to find out tomorrow. Steve Rogers, one of the knocks for a long time on Donald Trump was the uh, the 35 percent bar. It was still there over the weekend, uh, and despite the fact that there are now only four candidates. I think, Charles, you're going to see that change. Uh, uh, there's going to be a big change, I believe, in the next few weeks. And uh, those people that were not supporting him, I believe, as your uh, guest just said, the Trump train's on the way. It start, made a stop to refuel, if you will, and uh, people are going to jump on board. You know, in the stock market, whenever there's a pullback or a correction, they call it the pause that refreshes. I guess that's exactly hey, what you're you talking go. about. <laughs> How refreshing is this one, Tammy? Well, look, I think it's if it's a wake-up call for Mr. Trump, but I don't think, look, what's appealing about him is that he's always himself. So I don't know exactly what he would change. Uh, his team might have to work harder. He might have to get more people on the ground. But the things that will really impact him are like Club for Growth. We talked about the last time I was on your show. They put in money into Oklahoma and Arkansas. And what do you know? Those Ted Cruz won Oklahoma. They're doing that again in this round. So I think that what you're looking at is Mr. Trump has to, I think, ramp up his game on the ground. Uh, and this uh, tomorrow, look, you've got two closed contests, two open ones. He will probably struggle in the closed contests, and he will do better in the open ones. And yet the delegates will still be split. They're all proportional tomorrow. So uh, it's, it's going to be a rough road. Well, well, listen, uh, Evan, I know that uh, what you see is what you get with Donald Trump, and that's a, a big part of his appeal. Uh, but uh, admittedly, I, I think they want to try to broaden that appeal to a certain degree, uh, in, to, to, to Tammy's point. When you do have these open primaries, he is lowering in independents and Democrats. But this big tent theory, uh, is there something that he may have to do to tweak his approach to this that, that gets it even bigger? Yes, yeah, so Donald Trump has to actually be presidential. His he might have short fingers that are like a child, but he has to also stop. He can't fix that. Stop. Oh, come, come on. on. He, I thought we were past that. <laughs> well, listen, he has to stop acting like a child. That will that's what's really hurting him. When he goes out and he in a debate and he's in the lead and he says, "I'm he starts talking about his hands like you just said, we don't want to go over it. Well, although, we want to hear although policies the, the and bottom solutions line and he's not knows, giving I know, them. You're a Rubio guy, right? Yes, I am supporting Marco. So Marco Rubio Rubio's. picked up that line of attack and it looks like it's hurt him and not it hasn't hurt Donald Trump. Uh, I think Donald Trump's been hurting himself. I was at CPAC last week, and the conservative movement is firmly united no. against Donald Trump. Charles, what I find amazing <sighs> is that the pundits and others are saying Donald Trump is hurting himself, but he's been consistent. He's been climbing in the polls. He's been winning. The American people are coming uh, behind him. And in Wait addition to that, let's remember this, that he has drawn more people, I believe, to elections and to the polls than any Steve, other political person in recent times. all of the late deciding voters are going to Rubio and to Cruz, not to Donald Trump. Rubio Donald Trump is lost. turning them he went in Puerto Rico where there was and right now no in early voting yeah, in Florida. Hold on one second. 40, Ford, let me bring you here, Ford. I, will, I, I, do, I do think Evan's on to something. In Louisiana, I think, uh, I think uh, Cruz actually had more votes on primary day. Donald Trump banked a lot in these early, early voting, which was brilliant on their part. Uh, but is there something to the notion that maybe there is some sort of inflection going on here? Well, I, I do think there is some sort of reflection among uh, what we call card-carrying conservatives, but I have to say that Trump is still the best position. I think he should be doing more on the ground than he's actually doing. But when we get past Florida and Ohio, should he win one of those two states, the map starts to look a lot better for him. It starts to look a lot more like Massachusetts. And I'm telling you, Donald Trump is still the best position. Unless everyone in the entire party gets behind Ted Cruz, he's going to walk into that convention, either the nomination outright or the most delegates. Uh, Tammy, that's not too far 
far-fetched that everyone else in the party gets behind Ted Cruz. Well, I think yeah. if you think in establishment lane, listen, I put a picture of bumper cars up. That's the establishment lane in my mind. It's it's all mumble jumbled. It's not anything. It's sort of, you know, whatever. It, and, and if you're the establishment, they hate Cruz, they hate Trump, but they may hold their nose and go for Cruz. Well, we're already seeing that. And look, uh, you've got uh, Mr. Cruz is going, Senator Cruz is going to announce an endorsement of several senators. Ben Sass may be among them. There is a realization this is a total Tea Party victory. Not only is Jeb Bush gone, but suddenly the establishment has to accept someone like Ted Cruz. This is fabulous. It's something that everyone should be very excited about. It's a, it's a great contest, everything that's going on. But yes, they are going to coalesce because they realize, look, Ted Cruz means change. Donald Trump, they're afraid, means destruction. And yes, let's have some genuine conservative change for, uh, for a change. And that's what they're going to come. And you're going to see with those, uh, it could be Ben Sass. Uh, you're looking at possibly Lindsey Graham, possibly. Lindsey, Lindsey Graham uh, Cornyn, of course, even Rand Paul's name's coming up. So it's going to be a very interesting cross-section you're going to see. Evan, uh, <laughs> what role would Rubio have in this? Because it does already feel like it's really a Cruz trump race. Uh, it, it, is Rubio still hanging around to be sort of uh, lifted by the establishment in a broker convention? Does he want to be spoiler? Would he want to join in as someone's VP? What do you think he's trying to achieve here? Listen, John Kasich has gone out and said himself that the, his only path to nomination is through a brokered convention. As Ford noted and as Tammy noted in the green room, 58% of the delegates need to break to Donald Trump from here on out for him to win the nomination. And Marco Rubio is looking at it and he's saying, look, I've got these polls that show me yeah, as the but best the guy candidate that, that, to make on Hillary Clinton. Consistently comes in third and fourth, thinks he should be he the heir He won Puerto Rico, he won Minnesota. Yeah. Hold on one second, strongly. guys. We've got some breaking news coming in. I want to give it to the audience. Former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg has just officially announced that he will not run for president this year. In a memo released just moments ago, Bloomberg criticized some of the GOP candidates, specifically Donald Trump and Ted Cruz. Bloomberg also stated that he is not ready to endorse a candidate, but that he would not stay silent about the threat that partisan extremism poses to our nation. All right, Ford, it's not, uh, again, we had a guy, uh, a really establishment guy, left-leaning, probably would have hurt uh, Hillary more than the GOP had he run. But what do you make of his comments because they dovetail with the, the same kind of things we heard from Mitt Romney and others? Well, I think that he's looking at it to be more of an establishment voice, whether it's center left or center right. And I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, in this election, not a lot of folks are going to pay attention <clears throat> to Michael Bloomberg because he is not in the key battleground states of Florida, Ohio, Virginia, and Colorado. So frankly, who is Michael Bloomberg? Does it really matter when we're talking about Trump's genitalia or we're talking about Hillary Clinton's emails? Let's be perfectly honest. Michael Bloomberg is just a bystander in this. <clears throat> Steve? Charles, it's clear to me that whether you're a Democrat or Republican, there is a war between those in control at the moment and the American people. You're going to see the American people via Donald Trump come out on top. I really believe that. Well, Tammy, mm. what, what is Steve missing? Because you're not, you're not as convinced. I mean, he's got the momentum. Yeah. He's got the numbers on his side. Mm -hmm. No matter what, more than likely he'll end up with more delegates unless something really interesting happens mm -hmm. tomorrow or next week uh, with respect to Ohio and Florida? Yeah, look, there has to be a unity between Mr. Cruz and someone else. Uh, I think already America is getting a little exhausted with Mr. Trump. That's going to work against him. As we know, of course, the early voters have gone for him. As people get information and think about it, they don't vote for him. The longer this goes on, I think the worse it is for Mr. Trump. We've, we do have terrific enthusiasm for the Republicans, but that was registering in double digits before Mr. Trump even uh, uh, you know, announced. So I think for Ted Cruz, his leadership leadership has to come through in getting Mr. Rubio to understand this and to get Mr. Romney to so understand let me ask you, Tammy, that how, they've got to do it on the ground how does voters, Ted Cruz not go, at the commission. How does Ted Cruz go beyond that core conservative base? How does he, where's his appeal uh, to, to a broader audience, not oh, just in a GOP, sure. but to in a general election. How does a Ted Cruz win over uh, the same people yeah. that Donald Trump are winning over? Look, you, you heard it You be, heard it begin in, in New Hampshire when uh, Rand Paul dropped out. He started talking about the Second Amendment, the First Amendment, the Fourth Amendment. He's a constitutional scholar. He's a constitutionalist. He's Tea Party. This is about a conservative ideal, that that is the message that has to be moving at this point forward, that ev all of us understand and embrace. So we can have a revolution, and it can be velvet. It and it can be and it can be strong. You don't need to be a jerk Trump, in order to be a great. But leader. Trump has. Ben, 
confounded everyone, the experts, the pundits, everyone who said he wouldn't be this far. I believe he's going to continue to confound these people. But that's done now. And, but and that's win. done. This has shifted. The, Real quick, Ford, no, last I word. I don't think it has shifted yet, Tammy. I'm sorry. And I'm going to tell you something else. Ted Cruz has got to make the case that he can win a general election against Hillary Clinton because we know that she's going to be running Planned Parenthood ads around him 24-7, war on women, hate minorities, hate the poor. That's the exactly what they're going to do to Ted the Cruz. They have a harder time doing that to but Donald Trump, and I'm neutral the in this election. The Democrats have a 30 yeah, percent decrease in turnout. The, the Republicans, even without Mr. Trump, will have at least a 20 percent increase. That's a 50 percent difference. I think you were being extremely the nominee, optimistic. The nominee for the I like to prepare will be the for the worst and hope for the best. Ford, I know where you're I, coming from, although, although the polls consistently show Ted Cruz doing very well, often beating Hillary in a general election. Let's hold it there, guys. And, of course, to the audience, you don't want to miss tomorrow night's primary coverage. Uh, voter, votes are going to take place uh, in Hawaii, Idaho, Michigan, Mississippi. and. We're